EDA Builder 2.0 with FPGA Symbol Management. Let's start with the Component Information Portal CIP interface. Let's start with logging into the CIP portal interface and moving to the Distributor Search tab. With the CIP interface, we can simultaneously search multiple distributors for critical part information such as pricing and availability. In this particular case, I will search DigiKey for the Altera Cyclone 3 484 pin part. Locating the specific part will bring up the parametric information and specific attribute values. Selecting the download will download all of the vendor part information including the DigiKey part number making it available to the symbol generation session. We can also transfer all of the part information to the CIS database as we define a part giving it a specific table assignment within the CIS database. Selecting Add will add the part to the temporary database. On Final Part Assignment ID, the part will be transferred to the CIS database. In this case, I will give the part ID ID underscore 1234, making it available in the CIS database. Now that the part is available either in the CIS database or the temporary library, we can initiate the process of invoking EDA Builder. Selecting the download button will download the content from the CIS database, making all the attributes available to EDA Builder. Moving back to the home page and clicking on Altera, the Cyclone 3 takes me directly to the Altera site. I will now click the download of the specific data sheet from the Altera site, downloading the content directly into EDA Builder. I can also download the PDF data sheet and extract the PDF data sheet or import an Excel file depending upon the data sheet availability. The first step will be tagging of the individual columns to give them very specific meaning from the Altera site to the format required by EDA Builder. This includes the bank, voltage, pin name, and pin number columns. I may also want to concatenate two or three columns together, forming a pin name from the multifunction pin sections of the individual pin columns. Widening out the pin name column shows the individual pin names which have been concatenated together from multiple columns. Let's now copy the tag columns to the main spreadsheet. Moving to the main spreadsheet, we now have the information in the correct tag columns. I will cut the first section or the header lines and enable the additional column information with the configure showing all of the programmable information. Removing the remaining heading lines, you will note that there's also several rows which do not have pin numbers due to the specific format of the data sheet. To remove these partial rows, select the accelerator command and remove, remove the rows where the pin number is missing but the pin name exists. Creating a new part and assigning it to the symbol libraries, viewing the CIP attributes, I can transfer any or all of the attributes to my symbol generation process. In this case, I will attach the attributes with the attached CIP attributes, making them available to my symbol generation session. Checking the data sheet, I now have a 484 pin part that exactly matches the data sheet. Let's perform some maintenance on the spreadsheet, first of all by selecting the direction column and filling with bidirectional. I will then select the sort and sort the data sheet by pin name. At that point it's easy to go through and group select the ground pins changing the direction code to ground with the fill command and any NC pins to NC and the power pins to power. There are several extensive accelerator commands to manage the creation of the FPGA datasheet. One of them also is the create unique pin names for those EDA tools that require unique pin names. 
When I recheck the data sheet, you will note that I have several remaining warnings associated with the duplicate pin names. Moving to the pins command and selecting the create unique pin names will automate the renaming, in this case, appending the BGA pin number, making it a unique pin name. Rechecking the data sheet, I now have 484 pins with no errors or warnings. Let's move to the automatic symbol fracturing. To make the pin assignments to the symbol fractures automatically, in this case, assigning pins by FPGA Bank. We can also use the interactive pin assignments if we would like to have additional detailed controls. Selecting the directory form displays the nine part fractured symbol set. Moving back to symbol one. In FPGA design, we can create either a generic symbol set as demonstrated in this particular view or a custom symbol set by importing and annotating the FPGA compiler reports. In this case, I've selected an Altera compiler report and I will annotate the report from the Scratchpad spreadsheet to the main symbol view. Moving to the main spreadsheet, you will note that I now have the signal name, the actual direction code, and other critical information including the I.O. standard and the voltage levels annotated directly to the spreadsheet. So let's recheck the data sheet. And bringing up the symbol partitioner, I will now change the component width to a wider component to demonstrate some additional capability. Selecting the views allows me to display different views. The symbol pin view, the symbol with the actual signal net name, or a hybrid or combination of the two views. I will now take the nine part fractured symbol set and export the symbol set to ORCAD Capture. Invoking ORCAD Capture, I will bring up the specific part and notice that in the specific part, the pin names are on the sides and the actual signal net name is in the center of the specific symbol view in two separate columns. This is extremely information to the design engineer to have the actual signal net names applied to the FPGA pin name and the pin number available on the schematic symbol. Now what we did here was shut down EDA Builder and perform some changes to the FPGA design, what we call revision changes or board changes for routability on the board side. When these changes occur, what we can do is go to the scratch pad, import the new FPGA compiler report, in this case revision 2 for the 484 pin Altera part, and import the part. We will then perform a FPGA annotation under the main spreadsheet which retains the XY position of the previous pins on the symbol to ensure that the symbol connections when annotated are relocated to the original pinout positions to the nets in the schematic. In this manner we can minimize any impacts to the schematic designs as pins are swapped between different available pins on the FPGA circuit. EDA Builder 2.0 with FPGA Simple Management, a complete solution with generic, custom, and hybrid symbols with back annotations supporting revision changes to the symbol set.